In this video, we'll take up the solution of the example introduced in the previous video, where we have a two-dimensional harmonic oscillator that's coupled by uh, this perturbation. In the last video, I forgot to put these extra constants, m omega naught square. Uh, these are just so that the energies come out in a convenient form. And we wanna find the first order energy corrections and the good states that diagonalize this perturbation. So what we wanna do then, because these, uh, so this is two uh, first excited states and these are degenerate. So we wanna build the matrix Delta H uh, that has elements in general and not L and not K. And we're going to drop the N. This just denoted the end energy level. And this, this was the index of the particular degenerate state. We're going to drop that and just label it as L delta H K. And here the indices L and K, these are used to label the degenerate states. And because in this problem, we have two degenerate states, uh, L can take a value of one or two, and K can take a value of one or two. Uh, recall that in general, the uh, matrix Delta H will have dimensions capital N by capital N, where capital N is the number of degenerate eigenstates with a particular energy. So the matrix uh, will have the following elements. So when L or K equal one, this will denote the uh, excited state one zero and when L or K equals two, this will denote the excited state zero one. Okay, so these are just ways of referring to these states. So that means that our matrix will have the following elements. So when L is one and K is one, This will be uh, the first element in position one, one. When L is two and K is one. So here we're building up our matrix Delta H. Over here, K is two. L is one. And over here, uh, so this is for L is two and K is two. Okay, here, L is one, meaning this state or K is one, also denotes this state. And when L or K is are equal to two, that denotes this other excited state. Okay, and this is our matrix Delta H that we wanna diagonalize. So we need to calculate each one of these quantities to be able to know the value of each matrix element. And then we can find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And there's two ways to do this. You can use uh, the creation 
and annihilation operators for a two-dimensional harmonic oscillator. And these are the creation operator acting on an energy level in J. And the annihilation operator acting on an energy in J will be a normalization constant. And this in here, J can be either X or Y. Alternatively, we can work in the position basis. Uh, for which the first excited state has the following expression. where again, beta is um, equal to this. The first Hermit polynomial, beta x, this is equal to two beta x. And the zero Hermit polynomial is just equal to one. So that means that this this is the expression for the first excited state one zero in the position basis. Likewise, uh, we can express the other excited state in the position basis. And this should be Y. It takes uh, this form. And just to have it as a reference, we found that the other excited state when nx is equal to one and ny is equal to zero. is equal to this. So then the idea is to go and calculate each one of the matrix elements that we're interested in. So as an example of setting this up, this first one will be equal to uh, some constants. So uh, I guess before that, this will be Just a bit more notation. Okay, so we'll denote these by these wave functions, psi 0, 1, x, y, and psi 1, 0, x, y. This one will be uh, 1, 0, complex conjugated. Our operator delta h hat. One zero, and because it's in two dimensions, we integrate with respect to x and y. And the harmonic oscillator doesn't have any physical bounds, so we integrate from minus infinity to infinity in both directions. 
likewise this matrix element will be given by uh, this integral this is x y operator 0 1 x y dx dy these two particular matrix elements uh, will both give zero because the integrand will be odd and you're integrating over symmetric bounds around zero and when you integrate an odd function in a symmetric interval about zero uh, that just gives you zero for the value of that integral So what we get from this is uh, the diagonal elements of delta h are equal to zero. So we can already see that our original unperturbed states are not a good basis because our matrix delta h is not diagonalized. Likewise, the off diagonal matrix elements Oh, this should be zero, one. Eight, one, zero. These are actually, uh, they have the same value. This is three quarters h bar omega naught. And to calculate this, you perform, uh, you can set up similar integrals. This time they won't be zero. And this will involve some kind of uh, a special form of uh, Gaussian integral with a polynomial. So what we end up with then is our matrix for the perturbation. which has these elements. We can factor out the constant value common to all the elements. And uh, the matrix is just zero, one, one, zero. And this happens to be one of the Pauli spin matrices, sigma x, the zero, one, one, zero for which uh, the eigenvalues which will denote by epsilon one two will be plus or minus one. Okay, so after finding the matrix representation of our perturbation Hamiltonian to begin diagonalizing it, the first thing we have to do is find the eigenvalues in this case, it was particularly simple because the uh, matrix representation of the Hamiltonian was one of the Pauli spin matrices, which has well-known eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues are just of this matrix. So when you add this extra constant, this gives us the energy corrections So or the first order energy correction for the state one zero will be three quarters h bar omega naught. And the energy correction for the state zero one will be minus three quarters h bar omega naught. And because the first order corrections are different, that means that the degeneracy has been lifted. 
So this if this denotes uh, an energy level of two h bar naught, this was the original energies of these excited states. One of the states picks up uh, an extra energy, 11 fourths h bar omega naught. And the other state now has an energy five fourths h bar omega naught. So there's now uh, an energy difference between them. That's about three halves h bar omega naught. So degeneracy has been lifted by the perturbation at first order. So we found our first order energy corrections. Now we wanna find what the good basis states are, which diagonalize our perturbation Hamiltonian. And these are, these will be given by the normalized eigenvectors of our perturbation Hamiltonian. And I won't go through the details, but for the eigenvalue epsilon one, which was three quarters h bar omega naught, the corresponding eigenvector is one over square root of two, one, one. And for the second uh, eigenvalue, the eigenvector will be one over square root of two, one minus one. And uh, so these give us the coefficients of the linear superposition of our good states in terms of our original unperturbed states. So the good unperturbed states are psi zero one. So this is from our first eigenvector. So you have the one over root two times. So each uh, unperturbed eigenstate contributes equally to the state. And the second good eigenstate or good unperturbed state is given by this. So this is from our second eigenvector. We get the one over root two, the first excited state over here and the second excited state with a minus one from this minus one over here. And these are the states that diagonalize uh, in which if you express our perturbation Hamilton in them, it'll be diagonalized. And you can check this for yourself you can show explicitly that the first diagonal element gives you the first en the energy correction to the first state one zero the second uh, diagonal element it's the energy corrections to the state zero one. And the off diagonal elements both give a value of zero. Okay, so these are our diagonals, these are our two off diagonals. So our matrix will be diagonalized if we express it in terms of these good states. So this is how you apply the, uh, the formalism we developed for degenerate perturbation theory. Uh, in the next video, we're going to make some uh, further remarks on degenerate perturbation theory. 
and present a rule which will allow us in certain cases to treat a degenerate energy level with non-degenerate perturbation theory, which will greatly simplify the calculations, which tend to be fairly long and tedious uh, in degenerate perturbation theory.